Welcome to the City of Cupertino's uh, special edition of a Planning Commission meeting on March 16th, 2021. Um, welcome to this. Um, this was uh, noticed, uh, amended at 4.15 p.m. March 15, 2021. Uh, in accordance with the Governor's uh, Act, uh, it's conducted pursuant to provisions of the Brown Act and a recent executive order issued by the Governor to facilitate teleconferencing to reduce the risk of COVID-19 transmission at public meetings. Ordinarily, the Brown Act set strict rules for teleconferencing. The governor's executive order has suspended those rules. The executive order does require that we continue to notice meetings in advance. The city has met all applicable notice, notice requirements. Members of the public may offer public comments by email to planningcommission at cupertino.org prior to the close of the public comment period for each agenda item. Staff will share all such comments with the commission committee subject to time limits applicable to public comment and make them part of the record. So, um, so with that, I guess we're going to start with the uh, meeting and the agenda items uh, that are here. But let's do a call, a roll call. Um, Beth, um, let's let's do the call and roll call. Okay, thank you, uh, Commissioner Moody Butler. Here. Commissioner Capil. Uh, yep. Uh, Vice Chair Sharp. Here. Uh, Chair Wong. Here. Okay, and Commissioner Saxena is absent. Okay, with that, um, let's go to new business in the special meeting. Uh, agenda item number one, but before we do that, do we have to do oral communications? I just wanna double check with Seth, is that correct? Uh, due to the time constraints, the uh, oral communications and written communications will be opened after uh, you conduct your new business item. Okay, sounds good. All right, new business, subject one. Uh, report on the location, purpose, and extent of the City of Cupertino's proposed acquisition of real property as to conformity with the Cupertino's general plan, project name Land Acquisition Torrey, Ap Torrey Avenue. Uh, the applicant, City of Cupertino, location 10455 Torrey Avenue with the APM parcel number 36940009. Recommended action that the Planning Commission conduct the hearing and find one, that the proposed action is exempt from CEQA and two, determine that the location, purpose, and extent of the acquisition of the property is in conformance with the general, city's general plan. With that, turn it over to Pew Ghosh on the city staff. Pew, with the staff report, please. Yes, thank you. Good evening, Planning Commission. I'm just gonna start sharing my screen here. So. Um, so the city has the potential uh, opportunity to acquire a property that is located very close to its city hall. The property address is 10455 Torrey Avenue. Uh, and prior to any um, acquisition by the city, a finding has to be made by the Planning Commission uh, that the, um, the proposed and uh, existing use of the property is in conformance with the general plan. And as such, this hearing, um, the Planning Commission will find whether that is true. And sorry, my slides, there we go. Um, once again, uh, the property is located at the northwest corner of Torrey Avenue and Pacifica Avenue. And it is, uh, just to give you a little bit of a um, uh, orientation, this is a view looking uh, west. Um, so in right in front of you is the library field and right across from the library field is the building in question. It's the, the red um, roof tiled building there. Um, again, for orientation, um, it's proximate, it is about maybe a quarter of a mile from uh, the existing city hall and it is directly across from the library field. Um, the lot size is approximately uh, 0.48 acres. Uh, the building size is approximately 4,700 square feet. Uh, it has about 20 standard parking spaces and one ADA accessible space. The general plan land use for the site is commercial, office, and residential. Essentially, a mix of uses is allowed on the site, including office, hotel, retail, residential, and civic uses, and that's from the general plan. Um, it is part of a specific plan. It is within the city center sub area of the heart of the city specific plan. It is specifically in what is considered the city center node. The zoning for the property is planned development with professional office uses, and it was built in the year 1979. Uh, the project was approved in the year 1977 with the use permit and uh, as part of an overall master um, plan for that whole um, development, which encompassed a few more properties north of it. The current uses of the property are primarily law offices. 
Uh, the potential future uses on the property are maybe a city hall annex uh, or any uh, office uses that can be accommodated in it. Um, however, in the meantime, the city may also continue to um, operate the existing leases, which are on a month to month basis until the city is ready to use the space. In terms of CEQA, I just wanted to add that um, the, uh, it is an existing building and there is gonna be no changes proposed to that building. So there are certain uh, categorical exemptions that um, apply. Um, that is, uh, I'm gonna read the sections here. Um, they are section 15301, which is existing facilities. And in addition, the city's action to acquire and use the property is also exempt from CEQA because it can be um, clearly seen that there would be no possibility that the proposed acquisition would have a significant effect on the environment. And with that, I just wanted to conclude staff's presentation and uh, the recommended action for planning commission here is to adopt the draft resolution to find that the city's, city's potential acquisition and use of the property at that site will be in conformance with the general plan and uh, pursuant to government code section 65402A, which requires that the planning commission make this finding prior to acquisition and that the proposed acquisition and use is exempt under CEQA. Thank you. Thank you, staff. Um, with that, uh, are there any questions from the commissioners? I, I just did want to add, uh, Chair Wong, that we do have Angela Sway, our economic development manager. And oh, wonderful. Hey, Angela. Um, also here as outside counsel to help us. Wonderful. Welcome, Angela. Welcome, Deborah. Um, okay, with that, let's move to questions from the commissioners about this piece of property. Uh, but before we do that, um, what is the purpose of uh, looking at this property and the acquisition, just to make sure that that's out there, the business rationale? I will let Angela answer that. I think she's uh, closest to that. Good afternoon, commissioners, and thank you for meeting on such short notice. Uh, Angela Sway, Economic Development Manager. Uh, well, Chair Wong, your question was, uh, what is the intended use? Is that correct? Correct. What is the intended use by the city? Uh, the intended use is to continue as uh, office. Uh, the idea is possibly to be able to um, move some uh, city staff or departments to that building ultimately um, until council and uh, city manager decide on the use. Currently there are tenants um, and the possible idea is for um, council to allow the tenants which are now leasing on a month to month basis to continue uh, until further notice um, in terms of the city's uh, use. Thank you. Wonderful, okay. So commissioners, any questions? I'll pass yeah. it on so that there's uh, context. Uh, if I can ask, so uh, could, you, could you hear me? Yeah. Yes, go ahead, Commissioner Madi. What, what's the problem we are trying to solve? That's the part that's not clear to me. You know, I understand, you know, we're trying to acquire land, you know, it's adjacent to the city, but do we have a problem that we are trying to solve? Yes, I will address that, uh, Commissioner. Uh, the current, current city hall, uh, the facility is rather aged um, and knowing that some of the equipment does need to be upgraded and with staff moving back in, ultimately um, more space is definitely needed. Um, and so this would be a way to address it. I think council at some point prior had looked into um, possibly renovating City Hall for more space. And at that time, uh, I believe they uh, staff had outlined kind of the space needs for uh, current staff. Uh, and, and again, this will address the need for more physical space uh, for employees to um, be able to so, oh, Mooney, be within City uh, Hall or associated. Yeah, let, so let me also, we, we are currently leasing space um, across Torre um, in an office building. The city attorney used to be there. I think HR is there now. Uh, so Correct. presumably if we purchase this building when that lease is up, I don't want to speak for the city council, but presumably um, when the lease is up for that, we wouldn't have to continue to lease that space anymore. Okay, so 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 we, we are trying to address two problems, right? So, so one, um, we are currently leasing uh, office space from somewhere else. So that need will go away if we get this space and sometime down the line. And two, we have to you know retrofit the current city uh, office and 
to be able to do that, you know, there are a bunch of proposals. I remember some discussion around, you know, building a city office somewhere in Memorial Park. So does this address that problem where you no, know, we don't have to do that? You know, I'm not sure that this is our purview to decide this. This is city council. Yeah, just, just a curiosity question, right? Because what's the problem we are trying to solve? And I understand, you know, our charter here is, you know, to approve this and, you know, kind of take a look at, you know, does this conform and, you know, meet all the criteria for approval, but also, you know, I'm trying to understand, you know, what's the problem we are trying to address. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, anybody I, have an uh, answer to that? So go ahead. Um, I have a question. I don't know the answer to the previous question. <laughs> Commissioner Kapil, go ahead, please. Yeah, I just want to know one thing. This uh, specific land, uh, my understanding is, is neighboring a some kind of apartments, multi-story apartments, right? No. Uh, on the no. Uh, on the um, the particular the building in question does not abut multi-story apartment buildings. No. Uh, no, it doesn't abut, but uh, there is a. Uh, uh, entrance and then there is a small office building and next to it is a uh, apartment. Is that right? Uh, there it's are not, no apartments. It's not abutting, but it is. Uh, in, my point is that that when you acquire this land, your uh, have you studied that how much uh, uh, the traffic from the public will increase to this place? This is right now an office. It's not a. Uh, per se, a public uh, 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 facility where people come and go. Uh, so is there any kind of a study which says that right now this is the amount of pedestrian traffic or uh, uh, vehicle traffic to this building and after you acquire uh, as in a Cupertino office, this is would be the one uh, because that becomes a kind of facility for the public to approach the, uh, the Cupertino City Hall or uh, affiliated offices. So that's the question. So, so Commissioner Kapil, um, here's the map, if you can see. Um, this is where it's located, just so that you have that perspective. Uh, yeah. Uh, you would allow me to try to answer that question? Ah, I mean, of course. Okay, um, so uh, just wanted to say that um, the there uh, there is no plan to use this for community space at this time. So the future use of the property would continue to be office uses, and therefore that that analysis has not been done right now. However, if the use of the property does uh, change in the future, and the city and the city council direct that this be used as community space then that will be evaluated at that time. Okay. So there won't be any offices like uh, acquisition of permits and things like that, which uh, current city hall building uh, provisions uh, people's movement in there. So uh, that kind of, a, there is nothing similar to that will be located in those buildings, is that right? At this time, uh, there is no plan to change the, um, the intensity of use of the building. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions from other commissioners? So I think the scope of this is, I mean, we're, we're not deciding on the land use. We're not deciding on what's being constructed here. We're just making sure that the uh, two items on the agenda uh, are covered. Uh, which is, you know, really, you know, that this is exempt from CEQA and that the acquisition of the property is in line with the city's general plan. So those are the two items at the moment. If something was to be built here in the future, if something was going to be rezoned or something was constructed, that would be something that would acquire in a different step. So just making sure everybody right. knows that as well. So then let's um, go. I don't know if this is relevant or not. Is the, I know with city hall, there's issues, um, with ADA compliance, do we know if this building uh, is okay or or not? 
it is my understanding that all of that will be considered when the city does its due diligence. Right. Okay. So it's really none of our, okay. It's none of our business really. Okay. That's yeah. Fine. We, we, we don't have the power that uh, city council has to make those right, right, that. And I, right. That, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. I was just saying that. Yes. And, and that's, uh, I think what we're trying to do is just make sure that if it makes sense for acquisition and alliance with the general plan. So, yeah. Any other questions from the commissioners? Just one more thing. Is that a kind of a permanent use case or is that something like a for uh, coming out of pandemic and just want to, uh, since the office space is opening and employee space is needed and so it's uh, kind of a temporary provisioning uh, for that reason the acquisition is being done. So it's kind of a part of the plan to use this in the near future or two, three years Commissioner from now. Commissioner Kapil, are you directing that to uh, Angela, our economic development chair? I think this was already discussed. That's going to continue to be leased to the existing tenants if they want to stay until the city uh, needs it. So a, a follow on question to that, maybe, you know, Angela could answer. Do we know how long the existing leases go? Uh, hello, Commissioner. Uh, the leases are month to month at this point. Okay, it's month to there month. There is no uh, outline time yeah. limit for that. And just for folks that are looking, I, I did look at it on LoopNet, which is for commercial office spaces. So if you want to look at that for research, uh, you know, as to what the building's existing usage is for, uh, you can find that on LoopNet as well, uh, as well with the general public that are following. Since I don't hear any more questions, uh, I just want to see if we have any questions from our um, general public. And is it okay, Beth, at this point that we turn to questions from the public? Sure, absolutely. We do have one hand raised at this time. Okay, um, let's set the clock or I'll do the clock if we don't have someone doing the clock. Uh, our first uh, caller is Jennifer Griffin. So welcome, let's unmute her and let her in. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair. Um, hi, I'm Jennifer Griffin. Um, I, I'm saying go for it. This is an excellent use of city money. Um, I commend the city staff or whoever was made aware that this property was coming up. I'm familiar with these um, business uh, condos that have been there for a long period of time. I wholeheartedly agree that the city should purchase this property. Um, it Cupertino is growing. We should have a large amount of area for our city hall and city services. And I think that this is money well spent. The, the rebuilding, remodeling of the um, city hall, I would call it the area where the staff is, is what, 60, $70 million was one of the plans. This amount that's going to be spent for this property on the corner of Pacifica and Tari is a drop in the bucket to how much it would cost to actually um, stabilize, get more space into the um, older structures at the city hall. Um, this is a smart use of city money. It's also meaning that there are, yes, it's nice to the tenants because if you're renting month to month, they, they understand. My sister-in-law actually has a business where she was leasing month to month. So I understand it, it's, it's kind for the tenants that are there. I commend the property owner for letting the city know that it was available. I wish the city was able to buy everything down uh, a Tory on down to where the city hall is. Uh, please, yes, go for it. Um, I, I, I think this is wise use of city monies. And then you all will have room to do logistics for what you need to do. I'm a firm believer that Cupertino City Hall and government needs as much space because the city is growing. We're a tiny but yet very important city. And I think this gives us room uh, to have um, more office staff moved over there. It just gives us elbow room. And believe me, the price of that land 
It's expensive, but it's a drop in the bucket to what the other plans were. And it just gives the city elbow room and more space to grow. Uh, please purchase this property as fast as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, seeing if there's any other questions or written communications. As people know, speakers are limited to three minutes um, in terms of uh, addressing commission on this question. Anybody else? Any emails uh, to that effect, uh, Deputy Clerk? No, there's no emails. Okay. All right. I'll take it back to the Planning Commission since we have no other questions or comments from the public. Go ahead. I'll start uh, by saying uh, I'd like to make a motion uh, that the Planning Commission uh, find that the proposed action is exempt from CEQA and that we've determined that the location, purpose, and extent of the acquisition of the property is in conformance with the city's general plan. Do I have a second? I'll second. Second by Vice Chair Scharf. Okay. Um, discussion. No, I mean, I think this is a great, uh, you know, even this is not our purview to decide whether to buy it or not, but I will say, uh, yeah, let's go for it and uh, <laughs> make sure, you know, if nothing else, we'll need the parking spaces for the library. So uh, this is great. Thank you. All right. Uh, Commissioner Mati Patla, go ahead. Yeah, no, I, I like the idea of, you know, uh, expansion where we are instead of you know, looking at alternate locations and spending, you know, tons and tons of money as one of the college residents spoke. So um, I, I'm definitely, you know, fully supportive of it and I like the idea, but I just wanted to see, you know, what, what are the alternates and, you know, and uh, what problem we are trying to solve. It does look like, you know, we do have problems to solve. So this, this helps us in that direction. Well, thank you for your comment. It is important to start with the business problem. Commissioner Kapil. Yeah, uh, I mean, from a cost perspective, with the alternatives of uh, expansion of the aging city hall and the affiliated buildings, this is a great idea because it is an existing building. I'm only concerned about the traffic implications, basically nearby and the parking spaces available. Commissioner Kapil, were you able to see the map as to where it is and the parking? Yeah, I, I, I okay. do see that. I see that all the time next to the city hall on the curb. There are so many cars parked and it is very difficult to drive by uh, at times to near that library and you have to really slow down. And this situation will uh, happen if it happens over right at that same building and people start parking on the curb you will have a whole road constricted instead of being widened. So right now, when you drive by next to city hall or library, uh, the, you can't make use of the road because the, how, quite a good portion of the road is covered by the vehicles standing next to the curb. So that situation will actually elongate towards right up to the, the uh, where the T-junction is. So, that's the only concern I have, basically, uh, in case the parking is not sufficient for the occupants. Thank you, Commissioner Kapil, for that input. I think when they start to look at how they want to reuse it, that will probably be the point to bring those up. Uh, I think that makes a lot of sense. Uh, I am understanding that time is of the essence, especially in these kinds of transactions, given how property moves in Cupertino. Uh, so I am in favor of this. Uh, so this motion, uh, and therefore would like to move forward as well. Uh, if there's no other discussion, and I don't want to rush anyone, so if someone has other talking points, please let me know. But if there's no other discussion, I'd like to call for a vote. Chair, this is Seth Pettit talking. I, I'd like a moment to deliberate with um, outside counsel, if you don't mind, just a minute or two. Please, okay, we'll do that. We'll take a two minute break as uh, you deliberate with outside counsel. Uh, and in between, uh, we will wait, see if any other comments come in you enough time yes thank you uh, good to go <laughs> okay so all right may we do a vote on this motion is that okay any other clearances we need all right uh deputy clerk all yours okay thank you commissioner moody patna yes commissioner kapil I'm oh sorry. you're on mute commissioner kapil Oh, 
Uh, yes. Thank you. Vice Chair Sharp? Aye. And Chair Wong? Aye. Thank you. The motion carries 401 with Sexina absent. Okay, thank you everybody for that. Um, I think we don't have any other business here. And with that, uh, if it's okay with everyone, I'd like to adjourn the meeting for um, the special. Uh, we, oh, go ahead. We do have oral communications. Oh, wait, we forgot oral communications. Sorry right. about that. Let's do oral communications. Anything from the general public that they'd like to share that's not on the agenda items. You have three minutes uh, to, and subject to the chair's discretion to shorten time if needed. Uh, please share anything here and uh, raise your hand if you're interested in adding something. I do see a hand up. I'm not sure if that's the on this issue or not, but Jennifer Griffin, you do have the floor. Jennifer, you can unmute yourself. Sorry, I didn't realize I've never done that before. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, yes, um, I'll go on and talk about this. Um, since uh, you guys got through the meeting very well, um, yes, I'm going to just put in a comment about our new high density housing bills that have been rolled out in Sacramento. Um, I am particularly concerned about SB9, SB10, uh, SB487, uh, I'm sorry, SB477 and 478, um, we need to look at the contents of these bills, who the authors of the bills are. I mean, some of these may have up to five senators and assembly people um, authoring and co-authoring. You need to look at the text also because there will be statements of groups or folks who supported these and the understanding is that the supporters are oftentimes the ones that wrote the bills or provided money, uh, shopped the bills. Someone will, a group or someone will write a bill and then they will shop the senators and assembly people to support and back it. And I think that this is something that the public had not been aware of. Believe me, in the last two years of studying these big housing bills, I have become much, much more aware as a Californian of how bills uh, are put into the legislative cycle. And these are things that the public need to be aware of. These are not little caterpillar butterflies that come out of the ethernet. These are, these are bills that are thought of by groups that you may or may not agree with. There's a lot of money that is being rolled out from charities, different sources. And these bills are shopped from our elected legislators. So yes, beware, be careful, read and decide for yourself. But I really think it's important that we watch these four because they're doing some very bizarre things. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, any other members from the public, feel free to address as needed. Uh, just uh, click on the raise hand and uh, we will call on you. Okay, not seeing any other comments. Uh, I will call for the, I will adjourn the meeting and uh, thank you very much for attending the special meeting of the Planning Commission for March 16th for the city of Cupertino. Um, take care everybody, stay safe.